on uh, the theme we started last week when uh, we talked about the naming of God and how in the context of our tribalism and our needing to own something, we like to put a name on it so that we can make it ours, make it belong to us, and so we make it tribal and to some, rather than realizing that the divine in his presence is always and to all. And so he said this strange thing to the old patriarch Moses, when Moses said, who do I tell the children of Israel is sending me? And he said, tell them I am, is sending, is sending you to them. Now, what we looked at last week was I am is not a name in the conventional sense that we would understand the name. It's not a name at all. It's actually a declaration of a state of being. It's, it's a declaration of an essence. It's a declaration of an acts, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a happening, a, a presentation, rather than just a name that denotes something that we can tag down. So I wanted to carry on with that a little bit tonight in my couple of talks and uh, in our quest for identity and I wanted to connect it to something called now. I found it interesting this week that um, uh, on Facebook Minstra FM had just posted this slide this week asking for people to write in or, or, or text in or Facebook in to Minstra FM saying I am. What have we been talking about last week? You see I believe that there is, there is something in the whole flow of life and in the universe, I, I call it God, I call it the Spirit of God, that actually coordinates and moves within all that is happening because something is being said and something is being said to me and something is being said to you about this business of I am and the very nature and essence of who God is and that I am is a statement of being. It's a statement of identity, and we want you to fully grasp that, and you can get the rest of the talk online from last week. But I, I want to, in my talks today, make a connection between I am and this thing called now. But I want you to understand something. Now is not a moment in time. It's actually a state of being. It's not just about present. It's about presence. Something much bigger. And uh, I love one of the, the slides that's uh, going up tonight. Dude, you've got to stop telling our people that God is already here or they'll stop feeling so desperate. The one is it the one before that one? Dude, you've got to stop telling our people that God is already here or they'll stop feeling so desperate. Uh, that's obviously the mistake that we're making because... People are not feeling desperate because we're telling you that he is I am, and because of that, he is here. Now, how many of you are familiar with the term, it's just a drop in the ocean? How many of you have ever heard that term? How many of you have used that term? Isn't it interesting that we use it in a derogatory or belittling way? It's a way by which we diminish something into insignificance, or it's just a drop in the ocean. But think about it. Think about you, a droplet, among seven billion droplets. Do you know that the oceans are made of droplets that are bound together and lost in a common identity? And within that, power and beauty live in harmony. So why not us, and why not you? Okay, so if oceans are made of droplets bound together and lost in a common identity, where power and beauty live in harmony, then we need to understand our role in that process because the droplet has both an identity and a lost identity. And if you want to understand the true paradox and nature of spirituality, it's about you having an identity and you having a lost identity, about those two things in partnership being very, very powerful. There's a verse in the Bible in the book of Hebrews that I uh, wanted to just use just for my next part of this talk, which says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter 
of our faith. I often wonder when I read the Bible now what was going through the mind of the person who authored these words. Sometimes I think the way that I was raised, there's this idea that some person sat down in an office or in a scribe's seat at a desk and somehow, you know, this stuff was coming in just like, and their, their hand was doing automatic writing because, you know, the Holy Spirit was writing the book. Um, I think that would be incredibly unfortunate because the beauty and the strength and the power in what we read is that it came through people like you and me, that it was colored and marked by their experiences, and that out of those experiences, they are trying to convey a truth that they have seen. So I wonder why the guy who wrote this talked about us being surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Not a crowd, a cloud of witnesses. See, what I find interesting is that a cloud is a product of evaporated droplets. And each one of those little droplets becomes significance and they bind together in the heavens. I wonder whether sometimes we in our tradition have missed something that the Catholics found when they decided on making sainthood of people. The question is, were they trying to elevate that person to be equal with God? I don't believe that they were. But they were trying to recognize that they were droplets in the process of life that had made a contribution to speak to our lives from the love and the generosity and the suffering and the overcoming and the victories and the triumphs and the wisdom and the knowledge that they had gained and the forgivenesses they had given and the relationships that they had had restored and restored in others. And somehow these droplets are what he's talking about, this great cloud of witnesses. There's something we can't see, but that speaks of so much that has gone before us. I imagine if that is the case, that, that we have this cloud of, of witnesses, these droplets that have had life and love and experience and, 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 and known who the I am is and walked with the I am. And, and we can draw on that power because there's still clouds of witnesses that are around us. Imagine all that goodness that's there waiting just to rain on you. See, clouds have a purpose. Clouds collect the droplets of moisture so that they can rain those droplets back down on the earth. They gather something from the extreme, the big, the ocean, to rain it back on you and me. And every time you walk out of your house or get out from under your umbrella and you see what's coming out of the sky, what do you see? Do you see sheets of water... Or do you see droplets? Each of those droplets was at some point lost in the ocean, one with the ocean, experiencing the fullness of something great and something huge that's now become a droplet and falling on your life. Just imagine if that's what happens with us as people. There's a, a Greek word used in the Bible. It's the word anamnesis. And that word is translated... Remember. If you're wondering and thinking this is a bit complicated, it's not really, because how many of you are familiar with the word amnesia? How many of you have heard that word? The word anam anamnesis is simply the same root as the word amnesia. So amnesia means a deficit in memory. It means the inability to remember things that matter. I propose to you that all of us in here have a degree of amnesia because we have not remembered the things that matter. And we probably best know it when we look in the mirror and we see ourselves and we are forgetting something. We're forgetting who we really are. We see an image that has then been manipulated and colored even by our own weaknesses and failings and by the expectations of others and the difficulties of life. And we lose sight of who we really are, if you remember that video there at the beginning. But anamnesis does more than remember. It's a wonderful word because anamnesis, although it's translated remember, it's actually more than remember. Let me tell you what anamnesis 
truly means. Measured against amnesia, the inability to remember things that matter. Anamnesis does more than remember. It draws the fullness of all that has been and by faith all that is yet to be and brings it right into the present, into the state called now. Now I want you to understand something. I am and now we're conjoined identical twins. You cannot claim to have experience of the I am, this nature of God that is and exists, is the existent one that's always I am. Do, if you don't also connect that with the understanding of the now. Now I like this because what it says is that Whatever is there is not something that was and it's not something that, that will be, but it's something that exists now in this very moment for me, drawing on the fullness of all that's been and by faith drawing on what is yet to be, the, the cloud of, of witnesses waiting to rain those raindrops down on us. I believe embracing this by faith allows us to believe a bigger story than the one that we tell ourselves. Now remember what we said, the divine presence is always to all, not tribal and to some. And as I was thinking about this yesterday, I had an image in my mind last night as I was laid in bed. This image was going over and over in my mind. And it was the image of a funnel. Now, I don't mean the funnel of a steam train um, or the funnel of, a, of, a, uh, uh, of a, um, a power station, you know, those kind of funnels. I mean, the kind of funnel that you fill things with, you know what I mean? The funnels that are a cone shape, you understand what I mean? A funnel, okay? And I have this image of a funnel. Now, now a funnel has an outlet surrounded by a large circular cone. So we've got the large circular cone and we have an outlet in the bottom. The outlet is much, much smaller than the circle of the, of the funnel at the top of the cone. And yet what's interesting that everything that is in the circle of the cone, which is much bigger than the outlet, all flows in one direction, and it's all going to find its way. The mass of all that fills the cone is going to go through the outlet. Let's call what flows around the cone, in the cone, surrounding the outlet, presence. See, see, we're a little bit like that in this understanding of I am and the now. It's like we are an outlet of a cone and there's a great cloud of witnesses. There is presence. It's the I am, the presence of God, the goodness of God, the power of God, the provision of God that sits all in there and it's all funneling one way. So let's call what flows around the cone the presence and let's uh, around the outlet the presence and let's call the outlet now. So everything in the cone is trying to find its way into now. It, it can't all come through at once, but it can all come through and it can all manifest itself in one place in the now because that's where the fullness of the cone ultimately shows up. See, now is more than just this moment in time. I want you to get that. Now is more than just this moment in time. It's the point in your life into which all the resources of past, present, future, above, below, beside and around pour into the space occupied by the thing called you, me and I. It's the fullest expression of your I amness, of the oneness of the whole and through it the wholeness of the one. You see, the wholeness of the one only comes because of the oneness of the whole flowing in that great cloud. So, so what is flowing into now? If you can receive it, it's more than the sum total of what is happening in this moment for you. And see, we get stuck in the moment and not in the now. And so we can't receive often more than the sum total of what's happening in the moment. But if you will understand the now that comes through the I am that flows into this space called 
now, past, present, future, above, below, beside and around, pouring into that space and you will allow it to flow, what will happen is that flow that you receive will be more than the sum total of what is happening to you in this moment and you will be transformed. So that's why he says, therefore, let us throw off everything that hinders all the lies and the false identities and, and the false truths and, uh, and the unwillingness to receive, throw it off and the sin that so easily entangles. What's the sin that so easily entangles? It's the unwillingness to believe the beyond that is flowing to me that makes me now what he is so I can say I am. And if you remember last week, the response to I am is here I am and that here I am has to be now. And when that here I am comes from a heart of faith and brings it into now, all of that presence begins to flow and it flows into the now, which is where my life is, not in the moment, but in the now. I want you to make a shift tonight, just as we made a shift last week, to say, if I want the I am, the response is here, I am. So we both are I am, which is why Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I am the way, I am the truth. Tonight the issue is, are you prepared, like that funnel, to appreciate and understand that it's all flowing in. If you will just step, not into the moment, but into the now. There is a now for you. And the now is connected to the I am. And the I am releases all the fullness and the goodness of the greatness of God. It's like the ocean becomes the droplet which touches you so that you can then become part of the ocean again. So as you're lost in that fullness, the grace and the power of that will flow into your life and give you life itself. I want you to come into the moment, uh, forget the moment and come into the now. Leave the moment Come into the now. Let it be bigger than that. Let me just pray for you. Father, in this place tonight, I pray that as we look at our lives and we see so much, we become overwhelmed by, by the moment. But there's something bigger than the moment. It's the now that you have created for us. And you said, now are we the sons of God. That now is your accepted time. That now is a day for salvation. That now faith makes substance of things that we hope for in the now. Father, I pray by faith we step tonight into the now so that we see what it is that you have declared we are and who you have declared we are and all that you have provided into that that we can receive it tonight and know that now is a good time. Now is a time of victory. Now is a time of blessing. Now is a time of joy because we're one with the I am. I pray every heart will receive it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.